Michael Sharp, alive and present. This is he. <laughs> this you is know, it. it must be very uncomfortable for you. You're now the one who are interviewing people. Now I know why people don't like to be interviewed. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, I think it is very useful. You know, in my training as a psychologist, one of the things that every psychologist has to go through is to literally, you have to be psychoanalyzed. You have to be, and I think it's very useful. So you get to feel all the, the processes and the symptoms and so on, you know. And, you know, I have a little problem with male gynecologists, you know, because they're only working out of what they're reading a book, you know. <laughs> you know it's it's yeah. a kind of little different. There's no personal experience that they draw. It's that's, something that's they read right. in a book. Yes, yes. All right. Michael Sharp. Um, you know, there's sometimes you see a movie and the movie starts in the middle and then it goes back and comes back again and so on. And so it's going to be yes. one of those kind of techniques. I've wanted to talk with you for a while and I'll tell you exactly why, what concretized it to, to hear how, you know, you, how things were. My first direct interaction with you was, I think it was 1989, the first night I started the Night Doctor show. Yes. I was, I had come to the studio two nights in the week for like an hour each time and someone who was on the showed me how the board worked. And that was done, Dave said, because listen, I, I had a sound system, you know, so I was technically yes. savvy. I know about those kind of things. Yes. So I said, I'm a good man. Then I came in the Sunday night. You had a jazz show. I think yes, it, was from, it was from 12 midnight to, to 1. Midnight to 1. Midnight to 1. Excellent the show. Jazz jam. The jazz <laughs> jam. I want to ask you about what happened, you know, but things are very strange in Jamaica. Um, the jazz jam. And I came in about, you know, halfway through your show. Now, Back then, I don't know if you know some of the backstory. I was the one that introduced CD to radio. I carried two cases of CDs. I carried two CD players. Yes. And the technical person had to come to the studio and just give me a plug-in. Plug in. Because <laughs> at that time, <laughs> there were no CD players. Yes. RGR owned no CDs. So I walked with my own, because my sound system had started in 88, mm -hmm. all CD, right? So, and I sat there and I waited for you to finish. And then you signed off and you came out of the air chair and I took my seat and made myself comfortable. And I think you waited about 10, 15 minutes. You said, you're okay? I said, yeah, I'm a good man. <laughs> then you left. I could hardly, my fingers, my hands were shaking. The reality <laughs> is, of what I'd taken on. Yes. I'm alone in this studio. Yes. Everything that happens is a result of me. Yes. And I had to go. Later on, I realized that what I was doing was technically impossible because one night I had a guest on the show was the Israeli ambassador. Mm -hmm. And he came, but he was, he said, back in Israel, a show like this has at least seven people. <laughs> you producers and you have your you're alone here i said yes so nonetheless sir so that was my first meeting so when you vacated the air chair and um you 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 your show ended yes i really passed the baton <laughs> yes sir no so then that was my direct uh meeting with you in media but i also knew that you also were journalists and you also mm -hmm. a news reader. Mm -hmm. So let me hear about those pieces now together that your journalism, your news reading, your hosting of a jazz show, how yes. all those pieces started. Well, I've never ever thought myself as one who is confined or constrained by way of uh, who people say you are. I've always wanted to be a true all-rounder. The jazz show that caused us to have our first uh, public <laughs> meeting, if you may, uh, was born out of an idea that one day Dr. Dean, Dorothy LaCroix, a then programs manager at RGR, 
uh, said, you know, should love to have a show in the night. And I said, you know, um, I could do that. I, 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 I like jazz. Um, so for me, it wasn't work. <laughs> for me, it was my way of relaxing one hour on radio and playing the music that I like best, jazz. Um, of course, that was born out of um, our similar path. That is, you know, we did the USA thing. And uh, as a result of that, um, you know, you got steeped into that uh, genre. And uh, I carried it through uh, to this day, loving it and wanting it because expression of people of African descent, it is just expressive type of music. And so therefore I was able to carry, carry it um, through and through. And, um, you know, the jazz jam lived on and, um, you know, I will always remember it. Um, always remember it for all kinds of good reasons. It was my time to relax. I was always um, a journalist, I like to think, straight out of Calabar High. I went to the Gleaner, um, spent me about six months until the papers came true. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. And then off you went <laughs> to um, the Big Apple, um, which geared me again, having tasted that wine, continued preparing myself for um, being a journalist and uh, one who wanted to apply his trade all over the world, not just in any select part of the world. And um, to this day, I've had that opportunity. And um, coming back home and um, figuring myself, coming out of when you go to these colleges overseas, Hunter College as it was, they have a radio station and I was a part of that radio station. I played music, yes. I could have been one of the greatest disc jockeys of all times. <laughs> you uh, know? I could have been a <laughs> That's what right. Year, what years were you at Hunter? Uh, I went to Hunter um, about 1975, 76, somewhere around there. Um, left, came back to Jamaica in uh, 1980. Um, in those rough times, <laughs> very, very rough times. But um, such as a time that um, I, was, I was due. So I worked well, with the, the calendar. Let's put, put some time, Peter. I was at City College. 69 yes. to 74. Yes. All right. So, so Fred out the road from you. Um, yes. And uh, I came back to Jamaica in 81. So you yes. came back the year before. So you can before. see some parallels yes. there. Yes. That's right. That's so right. When you came back, you went straight to the Gleaner? No, no. I, I, I left Calabar High School in 74. That's when you went mm -hmm. to uh, City or leaving City. Um, I went to the Galena for six months. Then I went overseas. Right. I came you, you came back to the Galena? When you, when you came no, back no, to didn't come back. What happened? Didn't come back to the Galena. No, just came back and come look at work, including RJR. And they didn't have any room in the infamy at that time. Um, worked with the British High Commission. Um, then worked with GIS. And um, Mrs. Lanaman, who who um, saw me on television because I was working in the PR department, but I knew I was a broadcasting animal yes. because I thought, you know, God, God blessed me with <laughs> the voice. And um, I knew I was a broadcasting animal. So although I did the print thing um, at GIS, uh, and then she saw me one day uh, moonlighting on television, uh, working out with the, that department, doing some interviews and said, that man shall come to JBC. Yes. And um, then when I went to JBC, a couple weeks, months after, I was shipped off to Grenada, 1983, oh. if you recall mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. when, yes, Miss, Miss Gloria Lanneman had cited that. And um, I came over there because she was a GM at the time. And then, you know, it was a government thing, GIS, JBC. So yes. they, could, they could make the call. Uh, she made the call. Um, and when I returned from Grenada after that uh, invasion, uh, the great um, Lester Spaulding saw me. He was in uh, the TV, the JBC grounds, came up there for someone and said, I would like you to work for us at RJR. 
And I was like, oh, really? Um, for me, it wasn't a difficult uh, choice. I, did, I, I checked out my friend Tina Geddes of blessed memory. I said, Tina, what do you think about him? He said, good move, man. Good move. Mm. Uh, you see, I left, if you recall, back in uh, USA, Richard Nixon was meeting his Waterloo. Yes. The power of the media was so strong because he tried to get around uh, deep throat. He tried to get around, he tried to lock down everything, but never yes. did. So here I am having gotten that type of training because I was in school then and you had to write about and you had to observe that coming in and working for a government station. <laughs> that, that, that didn't sit too well with me because I don't like to be told what to do. I am aware of um, my freedom and freedom of thought and not to come under. I have no problem with people who work with them because as long as you know what you're into, but my own scheme of things was then that um, you went off to Grenada and it was managed by government yes. and they would have wanted to manage me and I tell them none of that. So that, that decision to step across um, wasn't, wasn't major. I, 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 so someone who I thought was credible who had worked both places, RGR Tino and at uh, JBC. And when he said, yes, man, he even gave me a shirt, <laughs> you know, one of those poor shirts. And I said, okay. And um, I would say the rest is history. I went there, joined um, the, the new team. Um, and uh, then shortly after became the parliamentary reporter which um, is a stint that I really, 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 really like. Um, even doing so now at JNN, um, we'll take on parliamentary uh, matters because it's a, it's a higher seat and that's where policies are made and that's when you can know. Uh, and then when, so I left television, went to radio. Yes. When RJR purchased JBC, they knew of my past in television and after going through a couple of people they say michael is your turn to go up there and take care of it so that i was at south odm for a while and um the proudest moment was how through uh, then i went back to study yeah i did my um my business degree my masters um and for me it was all about using that as my lab yeah and we we took we took um, CVM down um, by meticulously going, measuring, 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 knowing what we had to do, setting our goals and targets. And then they came number one um, through some serious... Yeah. I, I will uh, mention some thoughts here. You mentioned Mrs. Lanaman. You mentioned yes. Lester Spaulding. You yes. mentioned Tina Geddes. You know, yes. one of the most important things, there are persons who were not just gatekeepers, but they were facilitators. Indeed. And many Indeed. of us are where we are today because somebody saw more in us probably than we saw in ourselves. Indeed. So we, Michael, you and I, we all have a responsibility to pay it forward. Yes. And uh, matter of fact, I pride people and do yes. that. I pride myself. I pride myself as one who will look at the youth and say, come, run, come mm -hmm. run. Nothing, nothing, if you work here, nothing will prevent you but yourself. Yes. You are your own limitation. So take it off of yourself and go with it. So my joy is to see those who are coming in who would otherwise be told, not yet, not yet. You don't, you don't earn that yet. Hold on, especially with news presentation. So hold remember on, when I something but you said, before you go there, Michael, I remember yes. having a conversation on RGR when I did a program on what has happened to the standards of broadcast in this country. And um, I was talking to Francois Saint Just, I was talking to um, Elaine Wind Leslie, Faye Ellington, and some other people on the show. The technical operator was Daniel um, Daniel Thompson. Um, Daniel Thompson. Yes, yes. And Daniel Thompson asked if he could get come in because he wanted to share his experience, that he was at JBC and he was trained for six months before he was allowed to give a time signal. Now, when it was his turn now, and they said, all right, you're going to do the time signal tonight. Daniel 
dutifully opened the mic, but he forgot to open his mouth. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there was 15 seconds of dead air. Yes. He was now put back six months more training. Yes. yes. Before he got to the point of a privilege of giving a time signal. Yes. But we yes. have people walking off the street and say they are broadcasters now. My brother, how we yes. got down to that? Well, I guess they must be doing it on YouTube. You know, YouTube, you can <laughs> make yeah, a bomb. It's not the same. Huh? It's not the I same. Know. I'm saying that we, we, you're talking about an era when there was uh, one radio station, one TV station. Yes. You know, uh, if you're broadcasting radio, RJR, radio, JBC. But also JBC had a mandate called National Development. Yes. So people don't understand how important that was. That's why we know all the original yes. festival songs. Yes. And we know not one of the last 10 years festival song because JBC had a mandate that Jamaica <laughs> should know what the festival songs are. Something as basic as that. So you came right yes. through the process. Now, what were the, your substantive role once you got to RJR? Well, once I got to RJR, um, yes, yes, the, well, covering Parliament, the parliamentary reporter was was critical. Mm -hmm. yes. um, you know, we, we we came on the heels of a David e. Banks who had controlled that for many years, and started sharing that with him. Iconic. Yes, uh, and then um, I became deputy news editor, and therefore was instrumental in the in the in the framing and running of that news center. Um, I have always liked breaking news. I've always loved the streets. I've always loved a live presentation of everything because I believe it's the only way you can beat somebody who is now on social media by going live. There's just no yes. way nothing beats that. And, and the adrenaline and the, and the moment in time, that moment that it, it provides um, and it captures your, your vision. Um, so it was always, always into that and developing that, making, you know, the, the big, the big games, the, the elections, uh, those are the major things that we planned for, um, state funerals, <laughs> official funerals, if you may, took pride in, in, in putting those things together. And, um, you know, they, they got the benefit of somebody then who had used the time and gone off to school to do his masters and in business and therefore understood the business of radio, understood the business of the individual, in, understood time management as being the most important management of all times, yes. you know, because that, when you get that straight, you get that right. Everything else falls into place. When did you, now, how does that fit now with the, on? because I remember you as a news reader, because the public don't understand the backstory, what goes on with the editor. And the other, we know what comes on the air. So I remember you as somebody in that air chair for the you know, the news. Yes. What period was that? Well, that started um, when I was at um, South Odeon. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the 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 exact year I I don't even. It started with the ten o'clock news. I, I graduated from the ten o'clock news. Um, where so we're live. We're not a repeat with a slight shake of the head, if no yes. for it. Yes, yes. <laughs> and and worked my way through that, and um, until you know, like you say, it was always a small club of presenters, and that irked me. I I I, I don't like that because I could see people with greater talent under the bubbling under the bottom, but because they were not there before, chronologically speaking. They, they, it, it was almost like a shutout, you know. So my thing was to open that up. I opened it up with myself uh, through, through hard work and, uh, again, the gift of God. I still believe that um, I have two gifts. One of the voice. It's not of my own making. It's not of mom and pop. It's straight a gift. And the other one, in our business, um, I'm not ontelegenic. Um, if you understand as a psychiatrist what I'm trying to say. In other words, I'm not unpleasant to look at. No, <laughs> you know, especially if I shave. Some people were actually designed, born for radio. <laughs> <laughs> or their, or their voices, 
or their yeah. voices for for newspaper yes 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 yeah. yeah but now we have convergence media now we have newspaper people going on and doing a little clip for one minute 30 second of the news and so therefore it has all come together and so therefore it's wider and um i'll i'll, I'll say this that um in the past we have come out of a brown culture you see on television if you recall that yes, many years we had that i quietly in the back broke it down yes uh, I didn't wave in a flag. You qualified and I, for it. You know, you qualified for it. You could. Yes. It. You, you can and no, it. but it's not not the door behind you. Yeah. Others, others subsequent to me have been through my own. Then I was in a position to put them on, and I did. I, yes. I did get some flack on some of them, but I, I treated that with benign neglect. Um, yes. You know, I, <laughs> we move on. People must look. People who present the news to us do not have to be from Hollywood. Um, and they don't have to go to the sleekest gym that you know, as long as they are believable and they are serious about their work and you can hear it coming through, content will rise over. Well, let me tell you something uh, though, Michael. Let me just, I mean, we're doing that. I, I'm being totally honest with you. One of my concerns with media, because I mean, or we're talking about media as a, somebody who has lived through it and worked through it. One of my concerns about media is at the time, one, we have a mushroom of media options now. Yes. I, one of my most telling events was I, I heard um, Mr. Recently Passed from the Gleena, or the yes. iconic uh, person for Mr. Clark. <laughs> Mr. Clark, on an interview on a morning show on, 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 on uh, TVJ about 10 years ago or five years ago said that, at the time, there were 29 radio stations, you know? And he said, of all the media houses in Jamaica, there are only three that are making any money. The rest are just hobbies. Yes. You hear the word? Hobbies. Expensive hobbies. So that we've had a mushroom of hobbies. And one thing that has hurt me, there is a, with all due respect, there is this almost belief that quote unquote, yes, only young people huh, should be on TV. Yes, yes. But some things, but people, you have to earn your dues. There's a certain process. And for me, you mentioned the word believability. Somebody who understands the world events is not just a voice reading something. And there's some media houses, the person reading the news can't even pronounce the people's name. Because they're not familiar with it. It's just something they saw on a script somebody gave them yes. just before they went on the air. Yes. Um, so the issue of believability, that you're feeling confident that this person is, is telling me something and I, I should take it serious. Yes. Again, as someone who came all the way through the process, all the end, behind the scenes, behind the camera, etc. what's your evaluation of where we are now? Just in terms of, again, age, Age is one variable, experience, all of these kind of things as we present news to people. Uh, that's complex. Um, one, the organizations who are, for the most part, private sector, look and benchmark others, especially in the United States of America. And they want the young, fresh look. Oh, they, they, that can't be true. I see every age group represented in American media. I see men with beards like yours. Yes. I see older people. I see people that could be somebody's grandmother. I see a variety. Our, we, we, all our people are somewhere between 18 and, 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 and 28, yes. at least from that standpoint. So that's, I'm not so sure we're benchmarking that part. Yes, but that's when you are correcting them, and you are correct. They are looking at the ones that they said my station uh, is for those who are 18 to 35. So mm. therefore, those who are presenting the news to you should be between 18 to 35. That's, that's, oh. that's, 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 that's the business plan. That's a concept. So because no, it, I rather it, call it a concept than a business plan, yeah, all right? That's right. That's, that's a concept, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the concept. So therefore, you older guys, when you come home, you will want to watch this pretty girl on TV, and the older woman will want to watch this handsome chap on television. Oh. It, we haven't gotten to content yet. 
because oh, yeah, right. <laughs> we haven't got the content yet. Because that's when you, you tend to lose it. That that young person may very well be smart and bright, may Absolutely. very well go and do their homework. But if you're there alone, well, if you just get a job just to come present it, uh, you cannot be as steeped and believable as somebody who has been in the trenches. Because it but will doesn't say... The present, doesn't the present business model now almost precludes that? Because in most media houses as such, presenter is a person who is a contracted post literally you could come in make up present your news thing and go home so in terms of many presenters aren't involved with preparation and research and so on well, How, actually, am i correct uh, uh that is doesn't obtain at the rj Aglina communications okay actually those who are presenting it are persons who work in the newsroom Okay, so they're, so they're familiar with the whole operation yeah, and the, the process. The the, From time to time, you'll see them out there reporting. I've, I've watched a transition. Yes. And I'm delighted by it because I know I was a part of that um, in terms of being in the trenches. Because what it does, it says this to the brand. But I must say, she would not know, you know. Mm -hmm. She would not know, you know. Because mm -hmm. them out there, they know what go on. Yeah. No, you can't beat that for brandy. You can't put enough money on that, as opposed to a journey person. And, you know, they're just, you know I, I don't want it to sound for one second that a person who's coming out of an, another job who is not their full-time job can't do a very, very good job. I've seen that, where that has happened. I'm not, but I'm suggesting that the greatest chance a better brand is for those who have been in the business because the pronunciation, the simple little yes. things, the putting things in context, hmm? you being able to say something and it has more meaning. Yes. Even just the it's emotional great. connection between what you're saying and what you're emoting. Because yes. if you're reading something of tragedy, but that sharp look on your face and you're smiling and ear to ear and so on, there's That's a disconnect right. because it's not coming out of your soul. That is that's okay. correct. That's correct. Now, so the, you I'm, know, so I'm of a group be, doing being being nice to that. Can't yes. say it everywhere. All right. So broadcast journalism, collecting it, presenting it, radio, television. To a large extent, that was your life. That still is my life because at Jamaica News Network, where I am the the manager there, um, I'm to hone people. Sometimes I have to lead by example. Sometimes I have to be back in front of the camera. Okay, uh, which pause I hold a minute. Rewind a little bit now. Tell me about that transition now. To, from Because we, we heard about JBC, RJR, the RJR group. Now, Jamaican News Network now. DJ. Yeah. Yeah, where I, exactly. Where I, was the, yeah. where I was the editor. And one day, um, the then general manager came to me and said, Michael, we're going to go, go out there and do the polls to see where we are. I hear you are the go-to guy. If I want to get, just get something done, I must come to you. I would like um, a show, um, you know, and it, it, it came out to be Your Issues Life, <laughs> um, where we'd go around to different parts of the island and the world, if you may. We have done some overseas trips as well. And... Um, you know, get the pulse of the people and we're going to be under a measurement regime. Well, we did it and did it well. And um, so therefore, the idea then was to do one in corner in Middlesex and sorry, so as to make sure we get all the measurement, you know, the Dan Anderson measurement. That was a strategy behind that yes. until it became um, people wanted it and demanded it. And um, so therefore, I, I went off as a special projects uh, manager because you can't run a newsroom and do that, a weekly program like that. That needs uh, the situation. Um, so we went on to that for a while until the, the prices became, you know, difficult to move out a half a million dollar truck every week yes. and to in that um so it was with the, if i flip back the jazz jam they had to we stopped doing that because they had to change out the programming in the morning to make it more you know put it on auto queue if you may um and so therefore that ended but your issues live ended when they, they it became you know very costly 
so to do. We started doing two programs from one location, so I still trying to match match the situation. Then came JNN. They, they, the station purchased cable, state, you know, the cable. Uh, and again, there was a, a television station, so they asked me to go there as one of the producers. Other persons were, were there um, leading it until they said, well, Michael, it's your turn to go lead, lead this. And so, um, again, I treated it as my own private lab where we use it as a business model. Uh, and that is now work in progress. And um, with, with COVID on us, we, we, we're doing some virtuals. Um, we're doing an AGM uh, soon. We're doing some AGMs. Um, people are coming in wanting to stream funerals. Um, well, tell, hold on, yes, no, you, no, no, we need to talk about that in a more specific because yeah. when I heard the first promo I heard for that service, I said incredible because what is happening is that we new business models are emerging. Yes. We have a lot of tools, and I said, but the, the, so many people are trying to record a funeral, live stream a funeral, but yeah. All you have is your little cell phone. Yes. yes, you can do something with it, but why doesn't somebody who knows what they're doing step in? Because the market is, you don't have to create the market. The market's already yeah. there. Yes. So let me hear, I want to hear the, how you connected the dots and so on now, so to let people know that, listen, we can do this for you. Yes. Well, again, the group for which I work, the RGR Glena Communications Group, when we are going through our changes and we saw things closing down, the challenge from management was come up with something that the people need. Because that's the best way to survive COVID-19. Come up with something that the people need. So your task, and then I task my team, let us come up with something that the people And in our meetings, and as you're well aware, um, what I will never accept that I alone will come up anything because it's a thesis synthesis the antithesis that makes up ideas. That's the process. Yes. You, yeah, that's the process. So, you know, I can go back to my mother but, but, but and say so she was the one who talked. We call it dialectics, huh? The dialectics. This gives rise to an antithesis. It, but if you struggle with them, you arrive at a new synthesis that's better than what you started out with, yeah. That is correct. That is correct. So th that was the dialectics to which uh, you alluded. Uh, that came out and then we say this and we say, let's put it in the form of a video and get it out there. And wow, they, they, the response has been great. Um, we have to be shifting around our own system to, 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 to care, take care of that. But that's a quarrel I like. That's a problem I like to have, trying to cope as to like gasping for breath um, yes. because you have nothing else to do. So therefore that has worked well and um you know accolades again to the, the radio stations you see all these virtual um, meetings and um parties that they're having um again this is born out of something what do we do in a time like this the, the challenge has come from the management and I, I like to think that um the workers and um have picked up the challenge and and, and have ran with it and that now our thing is this, these things have to go beyond COVID-19 and um, although it will be here for us forever, but you, we're talking about after we have gone down to a level that's manageable and that we can reopen under good guidance. Um, but these things that are now planted in, we, the history must show that it came out of a time when we had to look for something that the people needed. So it's really with the pulse of the people. And um, you have to be, especially if you're in the communication business, what it is. What is it that the people are tired of now? So and let's what is the it? model now. You, you, you would provide a crew. You cover the event live. Yes. Do, you know, do you transmit live or just yes. record? And we do both, but for doing? the main part. Our, our dear sister, um, Alison Anderson, uh, um, recently departed. Um, they called me and said, listen, Michael, we'd like to do something for Alison from up here at the, you know, um, UWI common room. And um, what will it take? And um, so, well, all right, we throw two cameras in there and we'll put it on um, 
your platforms, including our platform. And so people who can't make it, and we'll put it on Zoom. So those persons who can call in and pay their tribute. So you, you get the best of two worlds. The, the, the limited amount who can be there, um, you know, can be there. And um, you, 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 you work with those out in Cyberland as well. So it, it, it depends. And I like to lock it into the individual uh, client because it's an individual need. No, I'm not finding all the need being similar. Of course, there's the basic, the camera, the lights, the microphone, that's, those are basic. But, but, no, but, you know, there's a big difference now. I've participated in a number of these things and the persons who really just thought that just by putting your cell phone on the ground in the corner of a room, that, that's going to cover it. I mean, it looks simple when it's just you alone talking to someone, you're, you're doing FaceTime with somebody or so. Yes, yes, but then yes. that one can provide the proper switching, the proper mixing, ah, the proper... Yeah, that is just um, one camera you see when you do... You absolutely. Have yeah, yeah. Camera. And you have to turn it away. When you turn it away, you lose the, the, the audio because <laughs> you turn yes. away the microphone from yourself and then you come back with it. And so we, we, we like to go with a minimum of two cameras. Yes. So we can switch, so we can make it look different you know because yes. you you know what we should for example let's look at us oh we're talking now we spent zero time framing the shots yes i'm here to tell you that's one of the most difficult challenge now when you're going with zoom with us multiple uh persons to how to sit in front of it and how to maintain how to maintain that position as opposed to like this because when you get into the eat of the argument, you're up. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? You know how many people, you're one of the first persons that I've discussed like this, that I have not to spend the first 10 minutes. That's right. Boss, I can't see you, you know. Too much That's light right. behind you. That's right. For, for, I spend 45 you. minutes. So you do 10, I do 45. It's yeah, depending yeah. on who the client is. Yeah. Yes. And then again, like when I'm talking to you now, I use speaker view so that when we look at the finished product of this, it will look like a two-camera shoot. That is correct, because it's, it switches. It switches back and forth this. smoothly, smoothly. Yes. The director is yes. just on, on the ball. <laughs> that's right, that's right. You're goody. Yeah. And of yeah. course, you know, you can pin the video if you, you, you don't want the switching thing, because sometimes if somebody's going to do something and I don't want to switch, I, I pin the person, you know, and yes. boom. But it's something that we all have to get up to, because, you know, the, the way you frame it, the lighting. A lot of people want to go by the light by the window. And, which is bad. You really should have the window come in on you, the light source. But it is everybody who is doing not to be learning so fast. Because yes, uh, yes. you have to still have a good picture, you know. That's the bottom line. You still want a good picture. That's what's going to so make the, the difference. the model now, you're presented the model. And um, again, we're going to have funerals for a long time. Uh, that's my estimate. Um, yes. And the numbers, we, we, we will gradually raise the numbers. But... Mm -hmm. People want to be there. People want to be able to, people who can't fly. So the idea, you can, you will shoot it, you will produce it. Huh? You'll be the, you'll, you'll, you'll yes, be the, yes. the production, you produce. Yes, yes. And you provide live streaming. Yes. Or you yes. give it to them as a feed, if they want to put it through a Zoom platform or what have you. No, we do, we do the Zoom. We, mm -hmm. we have the, the Zoom account. Um, we do, we, don't worry yourself. <clears throat> you just come, have your thing. We, um, and it depends, again, you have a situation where <clears throat> very soon I'll be just be getting a feed uh, from a, a client and send it on our platform, JNN, and, um, the, 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 and I hope you don't mind me having a drink in the morning. Oh, no. I mean, I, I have my tea here too, you know, and I'm and, and, and <laughs> nice thing about it. I'd love to share it with you. I'd love to offer you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my drink is a mixed drink, I, I must confess. It has um, H2O in it. And, um, <clears throat> you know, they, some other company says it's life. But well, let, me, let, me, let me show you mine now. Okay, you see this? Um, all of this is from, it's a combination of Moringa petals. Yes. Guinea hen weed. Yes. Um, vervain. Yes. And mint. Yes. And it's all from outside. I mean, that's how we roll, sir. So, and then yeah, we, 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 we serve it 
and I call it my 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 broad spectrum tea. Broad spectrum. <laughs> broad, broad spectrum. <laughs> corona. Yeah. <laughs> well, in a sense, because what it does, it boosts my immune system. That is correct. Mm -hmm. And can I tell you something though? This is an aside. I went on an assignment recently. Do you know that Jamaica teas, Jamaican teas, made more profit in 2020 than ever before? Because I of can tea, imagine. Because I of the problem. And then Absolutely. It's just amazing that one man's um, doom is another man's bright star. You know, it, it just shows, you know. But my brother, I, I, I digress. <laughs> so the model is emerging. And yes. uh, it's a matter now of just perfecting it. I mean, getting it out there so a person That's will right. be able to realize that it can be done. Well, I'm happy. Why I'm, why I'm happy for this because I just wasn't seeing. I was just wondering if you know you were just being parked, giving Jane to play with. I hold on to that, Michael. I just no, 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 don't touch anything. Let's hold on to it. But then, I've never worked harder in my life. Yes, I cannot imagine if you know what it is to take care of a JNN. Uh, where we do a newscast, frontline news at 8 o'clock, where we are, have decided that we are going to be the frontline people for breaking news. Uh, we're going to give you your COVID-19 updates. Um, we're just going to be in your face. <clears throat> However, not necessarily on just flow and digital, but every platform. But again, so, I, I, I'm, I, I'm sensing some of that, that you have a very close integration with YouTube in terms yes, of yes. how quickly do your programs so is that the YouTube is part of your distribution network indeed all my argument if you're not on social media you do not exist um, because mm -hmm. people will say to you I saw it on JNN <clears throat> when I say was it floor digital and say no man it was on my, my phone yeah uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know so you have to be mobile with them and you have to be right and it's not an age thing it's not a thing where I'm not going up on, I, I don't do YouTube, I don't do Facebook. No, that, I'm sorry. If, if you don't do those things, you're not doing. Because that's how the world has gone. Did yeah. I say it, has evolution. Gone. There's an evolution in media. And if you opted out, so that I don't use telephone, yes. you realize where you got off the bus. The, no. I don't watch TV. You don't yes. realize the bus, you know? And then you keep, and then there was this mythical thing that one is going to wipe out the other. No. It provides different niches, different spaces, and different spots. Different age groups, different age cohorts. Absolutely. Cohort, you know, and, and they, you they know what I like? Carry. Somebody like you, I hope that you have a chance to talk to some of the young people. When some of the young people are interacting with them on, about the digital world. And then I tell them that, listen, I did my PhD with punch cards. And say, yes. what's a punch card? <laughs> and I explained to them, we, we take them all the way down. I mean, you can talk about media. You know, the, the first time, I was one of the first persons on air at Power 106, the first mm -hmm. digital station. When you can literally, one day I went in and I did a, I recorded a commercial. And uh, after the, by the time I got out to my car, I heard the commercial on air. <laughs> It was like magic. You know yes. where we're coming from, Michael. Yes. yes After you yes. record on the open reel tape. Yes. And the cut yes. and splice and cut is all a week. Yeah, the tape drop off. <laughs> it's all a week before that commercial gets on the air. Yes. yes. You know, by the time I'm driving out, mm -hmm. the commercial is on the air. So you yes. who has worked behind the camera, before the camera, Beside. television, radio, so that the whole process now can... If something happens, you know, no, we can't do that. We can't do that and so on. Right. It's important that the, the process, people understand the process by which you do these things. Did get a chance to talk to, to people because I did spend some about five years in the classroom at NCU teaching media, teaching yes. um, practical hands-on type of, um, you know, reporting, camera work, editing, all that goes to it. And, you know, what's fascinating is that you realize how quickly things has moved and is moving and that you have bridged so many of the revolution, spectrum. revolution spectrum. the spectrums, you know, and it is just amazing. And for those of us who think we know it all, 
Oh, you wait till tomorrow comes and new thing come in. So you better yeah, exactly. get on board and be on cutting edge. All right. Well, we, we, we started, we talked about your jazz side that is separate from apart from this broad journalism side. But I remember, and I've never asked you about this, on two occasions, I was at something that was a police related matter. On the team that turned up, there was somebody looking a lot like you. Yes, in, yes. Um, in the approach, in yes. um, fatigue. A, <laughs> fatigue, looked something like looked like an M1 uh, across the chest and so on. Was yes. that an illusion on my part that I saw? Not you at all, not like at that? all. Michael Sharp has been a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force for as long as I can think, 1989 or something like that. Um, I've always been a part of it, um, you know, and uh, proud to be uh, a part of it. It has shown me a lot of stuff. It has shown me the ugly side of policing and the good side of policing. But um, I remain a Jamaican and there's a, there's a, sand, a line in the sand that I draw. I'm on the good side. Which side are you on, sir? Yeah, Cop yeah, or you know, any journalist guys. or any yeah. Now, how does this yes, impact you know, your so other life, your life as a broadcaster? Uh, it, it doesn't because I'm not a, I'm an auxiliary, not a, yes. not a, a full-time, you know, you know, I've done that. I've done my full-time stuff. Um, and I suspect that perhaps when you, 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 you saw me there, um, but I've, I'm more um, supportive in different areas, you know, um, strategies and, and what have you, and um, working through programs, the JCF now you have on radio, uh, and matters like that. But um, it is one of the ways I believe that Jamaicans can serve. Some people do it through the tree jar. I do it, I do, I do it through the district constable movement, um, where I serve my country, um, do it so. Um, the, the issue has come up ever before about conflict of interest. I remember once somebody called me from UWE and said, Michael, you know, they're talking, talking about you in class and wondering if there's no conflict of interest. I said, where's the conflict and in whose interest? Um, because I don't join the True Blue Club, you know, um, as you and I would know from New York, the True Blue, um, where you, you, you know, I, I was caught up a lot when they're saying that um, Michael Sharp usually turn off dance. Yes. In fact, I have seen you. The first time I saw you, it was at a a stage show, or you know, yes. a, a session. It was somewhere on that parking lot by um, NHT, and one of the persons yes. in the background with the big gun was looking very much like Michael Sharp. Yes. Um, well, I was just coming to be a part part of the team to remind people that they have broken the law. Yes. Um, and because the law says a certain hour and certain decibels, and that's and that's how it is. Um, happily, I, I I I was not one of those cops who was about to broker a deal with anyone. Yes. Um, they knew me like that. I was on nobody's payroll and will never ever be on the payroll. I mean, some of them even brought it to my to my workplace to get rid of Michael Sharp out there, and and my bosses took it and and showed me and laughed. And say what are, what are they saying? You're doing something wrong, Michael. You know, <laughs> you know. But there you are. Um, yes. It is. It is. My argument is that the law is a law, and we have to observe it. We we are a society of law and order. If we don't have that, then we then we run into problems. And um, I serve. So uh, I'm one of those. You know, I I do not believe in this thing called retirement. I believe that people reinvent themselves yeah. and they, they move on. This notion that I define retirement as doing that which you absolutely enjoy. <laughs> now, <laughs> so when you enjoy something, you know, you really, you know, find a way to, you, you keep doing it on and on and on and on. But employment may end yes. in that term that somebody else wants to employ you. Uh, what do you project the next? 20 years, Michael? Well, if I am so I'm blessed to have um, a good life um, and long life, enriched life, not just long life, because longevity has its place, um, I really would be see, uh, not retirement, but repurposement. 
Um, I have started out, I, I'm, I'm doing my honey farm, you know, I have my, my bee farm. I have, um, I've, I've never painted my house as much as I've painted it, thanks to COVID. <laughs> never, never well, grew. I, 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 there's a house that I know that Michael Sharp lives in, are you still living? And the amount of wasps that I see around the house. The wasp, <laughs> I didn't know that wasps give, give honey. No, sir. Well, I have moved moved the, the non-productive ones, animals, to the productive ones. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, I've been around it for a while. I just thought maybe you just find a way to sort of hybridize the wasps so them give honey. Oh, boy, I wish I could. They were enough at one time. But um, happily, we, we, we found a way to be rid of them. And happily, we have put things in place. Um, so we have a bee farm at the same location. Um, and because, you know, the, the wonderful thing about bee farm, you don't have to go to the, the farm every day. You go every mm -hmm. two weeks, <laughs> you know, and they give you something that's exclusive called honey. You do not have to right. put a tip of anything in it. Um, all you have to do is just take care of them, make sure that, you know, they, they don't fly away and um, swarm, as we call it. And um, it's and the, the longevity for the product is something else, <laughs> you no, know. It lasts forever. I don't rush the sale at all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's healthy. And it makes a fine, fine mixture for that tea you're drinking. <laughs> well, you see, there's only that my tea has nothing in it, you know. Well, you myself. Straight, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, ever so often, I do a little honey, but no sugar. Yes, sugar. yes. Absolutely no sugar. <laughs> Michael Sharp, it was wonderful touching base with you. I said, because there's an anchor. When I noticed that one, my media career started with replacing you in that air chair. And yes. when I heard you present that, listen, we can package your event. Yes, we can. Yes. I said, my goodness. Yes. You found a solution to help people too. And it's about media. Yes, yes. Wonderful talking yes, with yes. you. And, um, I enjoyed this time spent. And I, thank I, you can, so much. I can see, have a better understanding and feel, and I see how our life intertwine. And yes. one of the things I said up front, Michael, we who, we, the other people who gave us a break, so to speak, yes. somebody, I mean, Don Topping, when I came for my interview at RGR and I asked him, you know, he wanted to know what, what, what experience I have in radio, I said, none, sir. He wanted to know what training I had. I said, none, sir. But then when he looked at my proposal, <laughs> huh? and he realized that I also ran a sound system and mm -hmm. put two and two together. But then he said, listen, we start people like who are with no background and no skill as minimum wage. Yes. I said, thank you, sir, and took it. Yes. But before the month ended, they said, remember that they, have, they want to rethink. Yes. Hmm? Because they realized that they had made a mistake. Yes. So they, they added something onto it right away because they realized they had something. But he could have just said no. So, so we have a responsibility to pay it forward when we see somebody who is young. And remember now, talent, you can't buy talent. That's right. You have natural talent. Skill is what you hone, what you yes. learn. So that you got the skills that hone your talent. Yes. And that's what the longevity. Yes. And the longevity. Now, you know, um, RJR corrected their mistake with me about three to four years after. I came there to look for work and they didn't have any in the inn. Mr. Spalding himself, three to four years after, who saw me exercising and knowing this, this fox could hunt, um, said, hey, I want you over there. <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> we're good. And um, I like to think they, they know they've gotten a lot more benefit than they've paid for. Well, because well, like you said, you only retire to do is when you start doing something you love. And when you, when you work for something that you love, then you have already retired. There's no such thing. Well, I'm kind of watching and waiting, you know, from the standpoint that um, TVJ has been going to the archives every Friday night. After yeah. the last four or five Friday nights, they've been replaying um, Night Doctor. And the last yes. week, Friday night, the show, it could have been done tonight. We dealt with two things the problems with taxi drivers <laughs> and the problems with street boys at the traffic light. Yes. And the consensus was that the most the obnoxious group is at the top of Hackley Park Road. 20 years ago, Michael, that's what we said. Yes. Those boys, they weren't even born yet. Yes. But they, 
So again, to show that here's a program that was tapping on the real issues and yes. media, but then let's see how things evolve. We'll here's see.